Hey, everybody, I just wanted to share this with you on a positive note. The movie Polar Express seems to represent the rapture or escape that's described in the Bible. Um, like in, in this verse right here, Psalm, 20, Psalm 48, verse 2, it says, Beautiful in elevation is the joy of all the earth, Mount Zion, in the far north, the city of the great king. Um, and Mount Zion, this is Hebrews 12, verse 22. It tells us Mount Zion is in heaven. It's New Jerusalem, which is described in Revelation 21. It comes down out of heaven at the end. Um, and Hebrews 12 tells us that New Jerusalem is Mount Zion. It's in heaven. So right here where it says Mount Zion, the city in the far north, it's talking about a place in heaven. So literally the far north as in you look straight up and it's up there. Um, and then I thought this was really wild. Zechariah 2.6 has says, Ho, ho, come forth and flee to the land of the north, says the Lord. I will spread you to the four winds of heaven. So these words to right here and also have um, are interchangeable. You can see by the lexicon um, right here. It basically just says flee the earth to the north. The to and the from um, is not really translated in there. So it could be either one. And spread again as the four winds are spread to the four winds. It could be either one. So ho ho come forth flee to the land of the north. In other words off planet Mount Zion. Um, and and I will spread you to the four winds of of heaven. So again the land of the north is in heaven. Um, so this movie right here, Polar Express, um, some of you, most of you probably know, I have these dreams and visions that come true. I've been proving that on YouTube for three years, that the visions and dreams come true. Well, some of these visions that I haven't told you about um, are just so weird that I never said anything. And one of them, I mean, long before I ever saw this movie right here was I kept seeing these trains. They looked like trains, but they weren't on the earth. They were like in, in the heavens and people were on the trains. And I had the feeling that the trains were waiting and that they were going to take us when it was time to go to the safe place. Very weird. I mean, I know it's probably, you know, symbolic or whatever, but I never said anything because I just thought it was so weird. But somebody else actually mentioned this to me recently. You might know who you are. Um, they were talking about the trains and how the trains were going to take us to the safe place. And um, then they were actually saying the soul trains, which I know that's like, you know, something from the 60s, but I, it doesn't have anything to do with the television show or anything. But I think there are a lot of people, though, that have seen these trains like in the, um, you know, in their dreams or visions. So I don't I don't know. I mean, maybe that means something. So this movie it's talking about this this train that's going to take the children to the north, the city of the north, the North Pole, which again represents Mount Zion, which is off planet. So at the beginning of the movie, the conductor of the train stops at the boy's house and the boy goes out there and um, he invites the boy to get on the Polar Express and the boy is distrustful and kind of backs away and the conductor says okay suit yourself and gets back on the train um and this seems to match isaiah 30 15 and 16 which says the lord says in returning and rest you will be saved but you say no we will flee upon horses therefore shall you flee and they that pursue you be swift so the the phrase they that pursue you be swift that's actually a reference to the tribulation it talks about that in in other parts of the text um and them saying no they will flee upon horses i mean how many times have you heard that people saying there's the there is no escape you know you're gonna have to escape yourself that's what it's saying here. You know, it says God wants to save, you, save them, but some of them are not going to, they're just not going to want to go. So it's not a matter of, um, it's not like God is going to say to them, um, you know, you can't go. It's not like that. It's like God is inviting everybody to get on the train, but some people are going to refuse to get on the train because they really just they don't trust God they don't want to go so anyway that's kind of what this looked like to me it like it represented that um but anyway the boy in the movie 
changes his mind at the last minute when he realizes, oh, no, wait a second, I want to get on the train. He hops on the train at the last minute and he's given this ticket. And notice a ticket says round trip on the back. And that's also what the Bible says about the escape. Um, the Bible says the tribulation period is three and a half years and that um, those that are taken to the safe place will will then return. So they'll go to the safe place for three and a half years and then they'll return to the earth after that. So that the seems to be what this represents right here, possibly. Um, this girl on the train represents those who are going out of their way to help others. She's actually more concerned with helping others than she is with her own ticket. And she actually leaves her ticket behind in order to go help someone else. And that leads to the ticket being thrown from the train out to the wolves. And the wolves are chasing the train. So again, that's a reference to the Bible talks about the wolves. So the, you know, the wolves are chasing the sheep, which is those on the train. And in chasing the train, they are led off a cliff. Um, and then the ticket... Um, so again, I think, I think there's actually a scripture in the Bible. Jesus talks about the pigs, um, being thrown off the cliff or, or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, so that might have something to do with that. Then the lost ticket is caught by an eagle and it's taken to the eagle's nest. And that's a reference to Revelation 12, where it talks about the multitude of all tribes and nations, the quote unquote woman that is, um, carried with by the wings of an eagle to the safe place it's all symbolic it's also in Luke 17 um and then in the movie the boy ends up on the top of the train he's searching for the girl who left her ticket behind because she was separated from the rest of the group by the conductor and he thought she was going to get in trouble so he followed her to try to save her but then he found out that she was actually put in the driver's seat of the train and then this scene right here, I thought, represents the escape out of the flood or the tidal wave. Um, the Bible says an asteroid will hit the sea, causing a tidal wave. And it indicates that the escape is going to occur at that time. And so this right here may represent that. The the train, you know, the Polar Express escaping, everybody escaping at the, at the tidal wave at the asteroid impact. And then we see the train moving up a very steep hill that resembles draw the drawings that I've seen of Mount Zion. And also notice the moon is at the top. So again, um, Hebrews 12 tells us that Mount Zion is New Jerusalem in heaven. And Revelation 21 um, confirms that, that yes, New Jerusalem is actually in heaven. It's off planet. The interesting thing about this is they seem to be implying that Mount Zion is the moon, that they're, that they're actually going to take the Polar Express up to the moon. And the interesting thing about that is, first of all, we know the moon is hollow because, I mean, I think it's astronauts have been saying that it that it rings like a bell and of course if it rings like a bell that means it's hollow well the thing is revelation 21 gives the exact measurements of new jerusalem it says that the length the width and the height of it are equal and it says that um that the city was measured and it was twelve thousand furlongs and that translates to about 1500 miles um so if if it means that the city is 1500 miles in length width and height then it's interesting because the base of it would fit inside the diameter of the moon because the the moon's diameter is um 2159 miles um and so i mean you know if you if you know that the two sides are 1,500 miles, use the Pythagorean theorem to come up with the diagonal right here, which would be 2121. Um, so it would fit inside of the center portion of the moon. The base of it would. However, if it was a cube, like some people believe Mount Zion, uh, I'm sorry, some people believe New Jerusalem is, is a cube because, because the Bible sort of implies it has length, width, and height, so they think automatically cube. But it could also be a pyramid, 
And um, I didn't actually do, um, I was just kind of throwing this together in haste. But um, if it was, say, the base of it was in the center of the moon or roughly in the center, um, then the height of it, half, I mean, obviously the diameter is 2159, half of that would be, so this total area from bottom to top is about 2159 miles. Half of that would be, um, I think it was like 1079. So this right here is 1500. So it's a little bit longer than that. So it would kind of protrude out. And so it would be a pyramid. It would be like one pyramid kind of protruding off the t off of the moon somewhere. And I'm, it actually makes sense. And I looked it up. I was trying so hard. It took me for forever to try to find somebody that was talking about that. As I finally, finally found somebody. Somebody actually wrote a book on this. I knew I ha could not be the only person that noticed this. And there was actually somebody that wrote a book on it in the 80s. And I don't know anything about that right now. I'm, I'm probably going to go look at it after I make this video for you guys. But I basically just wanted to throw this out here, out there for you guys to look at. It is possible that Mount Zion, New Jerusalem, is is inside of the moon. That that's the safe place. Um, anyway, so it's just interesting that the movie seems to depict that. Um, this Polar Express going up this mountain that looks like depictions of Mount Zion. And at the top of that is the moon. So it looks like they're going up to the moon. And from the perspective of somebody that's not on the train, it actually looks like the moon is headed to nowhere. Um, but from the train's perspective, when they get up at the top, there's this bridge over here that nobody else can see. So anyway, they, they go up to wherever it is they're going. It looks like maybe it's depicting the moon. And at this point in the film, the conductor tells the children he has stumbled and fallen on his path and but he never got off the train kind of thing um and uh then they pass through this car on the train the broken and discarded toys and one of them is a scrooge and he's a puppet that's being controlled by a ghost um so i'm not really sure what that's all about but um then they reach the city of the north at five till midnight and that seems to be a reference to matthew 25 where it says the bridegroom will come at midnight um and it's that is referencing the the taking away of the bride which revelation 21 tells us is new jerusalem in heaven in the heaven taken to the heavenly place which will then return to the earth after the tribulation that's in matthew 24 so they'd have to be taken before the tribulation in order to come back to the earth after that. So again, that's that's midnight. The boy and the girl end up at the very back of the train because they want to help someone who's alone back there. And they end up going on this long adventure that eventually lands them in Santa's toy bag. Well, anyway, they leave the back of that train at this crossroads right here. And I noticed there were seven crossroads meeting in the same area. So seven's like this biblical number. And that then they hear this music. And by the way, only two of them hear the music. The other one doesn't um, until later. Two of them hear this music. And that leads them into this area where the elves are, are watching and monitoring the children on earth and deciding who's been naughty and who's been nice. And that's um, kind of like a reference to the Elohim um, judging humanity, actually watching humanity on the earth. Um, so I guess somebody was flagged as a naughty and then it turns out they were in New York. That might be a reference to the headquarters of the beast, which is in New York city. I don't know. Anyway, they're discussing it and, um, the boy begins to repent right here and then they decide to give him a break. So that's another reference to the biblical text. The three children, that's a reference to the three groups of humanity that we know is in Ezekiel five and Joel two, among others. Anyway, I'm about to run out of time, so I'm just going to skip through here. Um, at the end, the the three groups are separated into four categories, which represent the four winds. One category is learn. The other category is depend on. The other one is lead. And the other one is um, believe. So anyway, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys are having a good holiday, and I will talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye.